guys, uh, welcome to Book People Facebook and our big uh, Wake Up With YA. I'm Shannon, I'm the Young Adult Specialist uh, and the Teen Preschool Liaison. I'm Lola, I'm a bookseller at the store and I love everything kids and YA, so. How, how could you not? <laughs> so we've got a lot of uh, great gift ideas up here for you today. It's we do have some new releases that are coming out this week, but we wanted to talk more about holiday gifts since there's less than a week until Christmas. Can you believe that? I I was looking at the calendar today, trying to figure out how many days there were, and I was like, oh wait, yesterday's Monday. There's one week <laughs> until Christmas. So I spent all day Saturday just helping people pick out gifts. I'm like, my favorite white elephant gifts. It's like one of my favorite things because you have like a set price yeah. limit, and I'm like, yes. We did a really cool thing with the Teen Press Corps this year where we did, um, we took ARCs that we'd received, the advanced reader copies, and we wrapped them up, and all we put on the outside was to the reader who loves, and we put three fun facts about the book, like, oh, the reader who loves mysteries, and is a perfect fan of Stranger Things, and loves books without a love story. And that's how we, and then we did a white elephant with it. So you oh, pick through oh. that, but you couldn't unwrap it. So the seals were all done off of the descriptions that the person has put on there. Oh. And so then at the very end, we all opened up whatever we got. So it was great because I think I didn't make a one seal rule the second somebody wrote fans of Stranger Things on there. I was like, and you can only seal book one. Because everybody was like, oh, a Stranger Things book? And I was like, it's not. It's not a Stranger Things book. But like, I wish. Were. Yeah, that would be amazing. So if you're listening, guys, Stranger Things book, we want one. Um, so, Lola, tell me some of the gifts that you picked out that you wanted to suggest. <clears throat> um, so, this is Akata Witch, Nnedi Okorafor. Um, is like my new favorite author of like everything. She writes primarily like science fiction fantasy. She has like an adult book that's amazing. The, the main character is still young. I think she's 18. Um, but I really like recommending Akata Witch, and um, this is the sequel that just came out. Um, because it's kind of that crossover, like if you have like a 12, 13 year old who has read everything and you're like, I don't know what to get them next, like this is a nice That's like good. crossover and it's perfect for boys or girls because there's four main characters, two boys, two girls. Um, the main character is a girl, but um, it doesn't, I've never had anybody be like, oh, it's a girl book or it's a boy book. And I like that the cover so sci-fi that it doesn't really give you that feel either way. Yeah, and this one, so this series is a fantasy set in Nigeria, um, and it's toted as like the new Harry Potter. Um, so if you liked Harry Potter, um, you would definitely like this. It's got a really unique magic system, um, and, and the third one is coming out in this late spring, I believe. So, you know, I, I feel like this is a good, you know, if they get these two, then they don't have to wait long for the next one in the series. How long has it been out? Because it feels like it's been one of those that just kind of like took the world by storm really quickly. So, uh, Akata Witch has been out six years now. Wow. Um, and so it took a really long time for the sequel to come out. Um, but then the third one is coming out sooner. Uh, but she's been doing, like, amazing. Her writing in general is just top-notch. I mean, I definitely, I'm definitely the person that doesn't want to, like, qualify, like, it's better writing right. or, like, some things are, like, worse writing. It's definitely, like, on that, like, higher literary scale yeah. of the writing style um, versus a more, like, um, it's still entertaining and fun, but... Um, Versus like some of the YA that's like right. just for fun and enjoyment. Right. I just saw that Matt's watching. Um, Matt used to be our events coordinator here, and he's oh. doing so. Hi, Matt. We miss you. Um, I am to no surprise to anybody in the world if you've ever been to anything with me at it as a book people representative. I'm going to suggest Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Um, I wish I could get closer there a little bit so you could see the cover. Um, this actually just got optioned for film rights. Ooh. And John Legend is one of the producers. Oh, yeah, I saw that. So, really, curious, really curious how they're going to do this because this book is done um, in verse. So, and it's, it's one of the stories where if you've ever read Spoon River Anthology or seen the production of it, you'd actually know that this book is really hard. I could not be able to see what's going on. 
Um, it's really one of those things where um, the story kind of is it's somebody's haunted by like you know he sees the visions of people in the past and they tell their stories oh. and so the way it works is this is in that kind of community where um, if somebody shoots one of yours you have to get back and get one of theirs and so this is one of those situations where he this a boy is his brother is shot and he feels like he has to get the person that shot his brother Turtles all the way down in Spanish, and then next week we're also getting Maze Runner, which is another popular YA in Spanish. And Maze Runner is great for kids all the way down to like fourth and fifth grade uh, in the start. Like if you want to start in the middle grade world with Maze Runner, that's an excellent age range for that, and um, super popular with the, the young the young boys really love Maze Runner because they are it is almost all boys in 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 the maze. And so they love it because they feel like they can all find like somebody they connect to. And I think they all that moment was like, what is a girl doing at our camp? <laughs> so it's a, it's a really good one. And the story sells really well. Um, and if you've seen the movies, then they'll really love the, having the books because there's so much more detail to them. Mm -hmm. So what else do you suggest up here? Um, well, you know, I have my Wonder Woman mug. And I see uh, Lee Bardugo's The Language of Thorns. Absolutely. Um, and that one is a great one because it's a tie-in with her other series, right? Yes, with the Grisha um, verse. So if they're she's already a fan. Now. I love that Lee Bardugo actually has a verse. Like, she's got the Grisha verse. And it's, uh, if you're a fan of Shadow and Bone um, and that whole series, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, what is the last one? Oh, God, the of the season. Anyway, if you're a fan of the Darkling, because <laughs> that's what we're really fans of, uh, this is in the same like, Grisha verse. And then she also wrote the um, Wonder Woman tie-in, YA tie-in, which I loved. Yeah. Um, I may be breaking um, comic book lover law a little bit by saying I loved it more than the movie. I did too. Uh, <laughs> the more, there's more, where the movie failed, like, where the movie, like, disappointed me, I don't want to say failed me, but where the movie went, it's ironic because I say the movie did the cliche YA thing. Mm -hmm. And it disappointed me, but the book didn't. Yeah. And so it's kind of funny. Like I was like, guys, it did the thing, and I was like, and I like we're trying, we're working so hard to move past that in the book world and in the movie world. We went right to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they played it safe. They did. Um, I'm glad that we had the Wonder Woman movie at all, and I'm Absolutely. glad that it did well. I mean, I saw it twice, so. I did. I. Um, I mean, I saw it as Wonder Woman. If you liked the first half of the Wonder Woman movie, you the love most, the most. Like that's the, basically the entire book. I just really like the way that she imagined the Amazon world, um, and I feel as much as like I, Diana is more of a like adolescent yeah. in the book, mm -hmm. but like smarter than she, she was in the movie. movie. I always, As a grown-ass woman. <laughs> I, always, I always pitch the, because uh, I, I book talk Wonder Woman um, obsessively, and it's funny because every time I show up, people are always like, oh, we thought you were coming in that Wonder Woman costume to do it. And I'm like, someday, someday, if you want a book talk where I show up as Wonder Woman, just let me know. Um, but we were, uh, we were at the, oh, there's, sorry guys, I forgot to turn the sound down on the phone. Um, if you liked the parts, like the little fun, intricate parts where she, you know, tastes ice cream for the first time in the movie, mm -hmm. or like sees people doing things and it like blows your mind, I love this book for that because instead of being in 1940s in, you know, the, Europe, she's in 2017 yeah. New York. And it's great because she has so many like random like, why is this person so angry? And they're like, they're not angry, they're just weird. Like, or no, like, why do you live underground? And she's like, we, they're like, we don't live underground, Diana. This is a parking garage. Like, and it's just great to see her have those same moments like in the movie that we all loved, where she was interacting with things. But, but it like, didn't make her in the book. It didn't make her seem like dizzy. No, it just like, and she like took it all in stride because like the premise in the book was that like. She was well educated on all of these things. Yeah. She just was like confused as to why you'd want to do them. Yeah. It well, wasn't like a non understanding. And I love the way that she like interacted with like men. Yes. In like a romantic sense. Like I just uh there's so many like really great like clips in that book. Like I, I started to mark them like every time I was like, Oh, this makes me happy. Uh, yes, I think that that book and and Miles, like are the two books I wrote talked this year, and I feel like it's funny because I take them in for different reasons, and like Miles always, like I love the moment where I blow people's minds with Miles Morales, and um, 
tell them like that one theme that if I tell you right now, it's totally wrong. Yeah, I love that. Um, when I book talk it, people are always like not expecting that from a Spider-Man book. And um, I forgot my mouse in case you guys can't tell because I have to keep getting up to keep my computer active, but it's fine. Um, computer's like way far away. But anyway, great superhero books. This is definitely a good year for superheroes. Um, if well, you, does Mar Miles Morlock have the poster in the back too? No, that's a DC oh. icon thing. So uh, Wonder Woman, any first oh, yeah, edition so. of Wonder Woman you buy will have its exclusive DC icons poster where it actually shows Diana and her shadow is Wonder Woman. And they are going to be doing that for all of the DC icons books, which, which is Batman from Marie Lu, uh, Catwoman, Sarah J. Mass, and then who is doing Superman? There's Superman one coming out next year too. I can't remember, but I just, it's not DC related, but it's Marvel related. Yeah. Um, the author of The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, mm -hmm. which has been like one of the best books of this year, um, she's just got signed a three book deal to do a Loki. <gasps> what? I don't know how I missed that announcement, but I'm going to pre order those books immediately. Yeah. Um, so she's like, and they're going to be historical. Oh, so they, are they going like more? Because she's like a big history buff. Right. That Gentleman's, gentleman's yeah. Guide, guys, that should be on your Christmas list if For it's sure. not already. Um, and speaking of superheroes, um, Marissa, Marissa Meyer, she did her own universe of, with superheroes this year called Renegades. We actually have signed copies in the store still, and we actually have some. If you were a fan of the Lunar Chronicles, we do have some copies of the Lunar Chronicles signed and stuff. But Renegades is great because it's a world where the supervillains, and Lily's going to go check them down now, <laughs> it was a world where supervillains were so prevalent that the superheroes kind of took over, even politically speaking, and now it's like everybody, like the supervillains want to strike back and everybody's kind of over the superheroes because they're kind of full of themselves. But they have a superhero training academy um, and they call them the Renegades. And at the beginning of the book, we see, you know, our main character, she's going to kind of try to sneak into the Renegades society and try to, you know, be a spy on the inside. And it's really cool to see where we go. There's the dual personality of POV. We see uh, the son of the two biggest superheroes and the daughter of of super villains who were big in the world that got killed and they're both like kind of in the same place where they don't see the point of either anymore um, but they both want to do their the role that they were given like they're not anti like she definitely strongly wants to be a villain and he definitely strongly wants to be a hero they just don't like the role imposed on either side so it's really cool to see their interaction it's like a kind of like a post modern take on superheroes absolutely it's like a watchman yeah it's okay. very much got that feeling i this is not the podcast, the video cast to talk about how I feel about Watchmen right now, but Lola and I will have one of those soon too because Doomsday Clock, guys. Um, oh my God, <laughs> not where we're talking about that though. Um, other than that, there are some great like things that fans of a lot of series will be really excited about. We've got a uh, Tower of Dawn, which is another one of Sarah J. Mass's amazing books in the Throne of Glass series. Uh, I cannot believe that this series. It's still going and still wonderful and it's amazing and Sarah is amazing. So her Catwoman is going to be super fantastic. But uh, Sarah J. Mass has the new one out. You guys should totally, if you're fans of that series, if you know somebody who's a fan of that series, pick it up. If you know somebody who's just a fan of high fantasy and really looking for something amazing to dive into, this is the series for them. It's a long series that's uh, got very, like the books, the last book before this one had been printed on the same paper they print Bibles on because it's so long they couldn't print it on regular paper and have it fit in like the one book that people would actually pick up. Like it was oh still my. longer than Order of the Phoenix on Bible paper and like it's still wider than Order of the Phoenix on Bible size paper. So <laughs> it was a little scary if they went any deeper. And then also uh, the Book of Dust is out which is a part of the um, His Dark Materials series. This is Fans of the Golden Compass. This is in that same world and I've heard that you know one of the struggles with going back to a series so long after is that they've kind of lost sight of what the the world was like and they or they tried to modernize it too much and I've actually heard that this book doesn't do that. I've heard that this book fits right in perfectly. Well it's like a prequel. Really it's like a prequel to the first series, so it kind of like gives right. you more background. Which was definitely something that I will always wanted was more yeah. about the about how the world was created. Um, other than that, I think great stocking stuffers or for yourself if you're looking for some fun light reading for the holidays, we've got lots of anthologies of short stories. Um, that they're, have been done. They're like the book equivalent of like a uh, life or the uh, like the movie. Well, what's the Hallmark Channel? Oh, Hallmark yeah. Channel like Christmas movies. 
Um, they're like the book equivalent of that. You and you've I, got all your favorite authors. So yes, and I think that like some of them, I know. Um, I think it's the Let It Snow series. They all connect, so it's almost like reading a book, a YA book version of Love Actually. Oh. Because all the stories are Christmas winter stories and they all connect together in a slight bit. So it's almost like I'm like not a love actually fan. Yeah, but I know lots of people do. Actually. They do. And I mean I <laughs> But it's okay. I mean the acting is no the actors are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It makes me sad I don't want to talk about it because I'm gonna sound like my friend really hard. Um, but um other than that, that's great that was not turned off. But we tried. Right. We tried, guys. Um, so lots of great and wonderful books. If you have any questions about why books that you should be picking up for your readers or for yourself for Christmas, because I'm a buy one for them, one for me kind of person when it comes to Christmas gifts. I can't shop until Christmas Eve for this reason. But if you are looking for great Christmas ideas, Lola is in the store most of the time. And you can come in and see her or any of our other booksellers on the floor. You can also comment on this video. And we will make suggestions if you have questions. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll be watching like this. You can send us messages on Facebook or like any of the social media, Instagram, Twitter. We are always, um, our marketing team and our booksellers are always willing to pitch more great ideas for you guys on Christmas gifts and answer those questions. So feel free to post them up in this video or, um, you know, anywhere. Any, come to the store, check us out. We have lots of really good new releases coming next week. So we will be Bye. back with our cheers of our... Like, they really like pictures. Like You're like, cool. Um, they uh, will, next week with all the new releases, would be great for those people who have gift cards to check out. If you're buying a book, people gift card is a great stocking stuffer. It's also a great Christmas gift. I know I already have one to spend this year, and I can't decide what I'm going to spend it on. So I just told you about 13 books that you should buy, but I don't know which ones I'm getting. Uh, but oh, and don't forget that the store, the only store-wide sale that we have, is on the first. Yes. 20% off. So come use your gift card and get so some focus. Yeah. We'll be telling you what books you should buy next week um, with all the new releases. It's a huge new release week. Uh, it's kind of the kickoff of winter season for publishing, so it'll be a big, we'll start to see a lot of new releases, and Lola and I will be coming to hang out with you guys on Tuesdays to tell you what they are. So um, don't forget, we also have a lot of events coming in January. We'll, um, we've got, I know you have Amy, Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner are coming for Unearth on the 11th. And then um, I know we have Chris Brown is coming, I uh, believe, at the end of January, middle of January. Um, June really, 22nd. Chris Brown will be here for Iron Gold. Um, and then we have lots of lots of amazing things. Um, Zenith is coming out in January. If you guys haven't checked this book out, our Harry this book, it's going to be a great one. It's a great sci-fi. It's a huge book because of the way they, they originally wrote it was done um, online in different formats. So this is actually going to be great. It's the first book in the series, and it's done by uh, Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings, who did The Murder Complex. So this book we'll be talking about more in January, but just a little teaser for the fact that this great sci-fi book is coming out, and it's going to be wonderful. Um, oh, I forgot to talk about uh, Cards on Mark. The paperback edition is coming out next week. Um, so this would, the hardcover will be going away soon since paperback is coming out. Um, and the sequel is coming next spring-ish. Um, I think they moved it back, which is smart. I feel like her first series, they rushed her a little bit. But um, if you were a fan of Divergent and that whole series, like her writing has got 10 million times better. Um, I will like preface this with uh, it, I would recommend it for older teens. It's a little on the like grim dark side, but it's like set in a different universe, just like really interesting world building. Um, if you like Star Wars, um, it's kind of got like a force oh, nice. I really thing like going with it. Really yeah, um, it's, it's, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm looking forward to the sequel. Maya asked if uh, Renegades is appropriate for adults or if it's just geared for teens. Renegades is actually excellent for adults. I read it. Um, a couple of the other adult staffers here read it. And it's a really great book for any fan of superhero um, or anybody in that like verse that you really like. This is a, it's a great story. Marissa is definitely one of those that balances really well on the line of like crossover between adult and teen. 
And I think this one was one of her best for that because it's definitely um, that superhero genre kind of speaks to everybody. And there is like there is the romance, there is stuff with the superpower. Like if you're a fan of anything on the CW, you're gonna be a fan of this show because it's it's very much like a a, a CW show, but a little bit like more in depth because it's got it's it's great. I really liked her other series too, so I'm assuming her it's, writing has only gotten better yeah. and Absolutely. So it's another it's another strong like knock out of the park for Marissa so. Meyer. That origin story of the superhero is really fascinating. Right. So. And this one I kinda like because they're you the, the origins or are, are kind of secondary to like the story. Like they've already all known who they were for a while, so mm -hmm. they're kind of figuring out where in that place they are. So it starts with the action of powers. You don't have to nice. see them get their powers, they already have them. Mm -hmm. Which is great. So it's kind of like Almost in the line of like the gifted and some of those runaways where we already they already have powers already like the world is already created around that. So it's kind of in the line of those TV shows that are happening right now. So <laughs> yeah, again, not the place that Lola and I can talk about superheroes all day long in case you guys are not talking about it. <laughs> we have a problem, but um. Yeah, guys, so we'll see you next Tuesday, probably around the same time. It, it'll fluctuate a little bit, but we'll try to find a standard time that really works. And we'll tell you about all the new releases that are coming um, and other great sales and events that are coming up in the store. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. See you next week. Wake up with YA. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to have to turn it off. This is always the awkward part where you get to see my face. like.